Denmark's Air Force is entering a new era. After decades of flying F-16s across the North Sea and Arctic Circle, Copenhagen has chosen to redefine its aerial warfare doctrine, not simply by expanding its F-35A fleet, but by pairing it with autonomous combat drones. In October 2025, Denmark approved a defense investment worth 4.5 billion USD, ordering 16 additional F-35s to bring its total to 43 aircraft. Yet the more revolutionary component of this deal lies in its partnership with the United States to introduce collaborative combat aircraft, or loyal wingman drones, capable of flying alongside stealth fighters as part of a networked battle system. For a country whose defense posture traditionally emphasized modest, well-trained forces and interoperability within NATO, this marks a profound shift. Denmark is now positioning itself as one of the first small nations to operationalize human-machine teaming in air combat. The decision carries both tactical promise and strategic symbolism, signaling that the Nordic region is moving rapidly toward a networked air power model, where manned aircraft, drones, and sensors cooperate through shared data links across Arctic skies. The F-35 expansion itself was expected. Since joining the Joint Strike Fighter program, Denmark has steadily replaced its aging F-16 fleet. What was not anticipated was the inclusion of loyal wingman drone funding within the Arctic Defense Package, worth 27.4 billion kroner overall. These drones are designed to fly semi-autonomously under the command of a human pilot, extending the reach and survivability of manned aircraft. Each can carry sensors, jamming pods, or even air-to-air -air missiles, acting as both scouts and decoys. A two-ship formation of F-35s could command up to four drones, multiplying combat effect without exposing additional pilots to danger. This system mirrors programs now taking shape among major powers. The United States Air Force is testing the XQ-58 Valkyrie and a classified collaborative combat aircraft project. Australia's Boeing MQ-28 Ghost Bat has already conducted joint flights with F-35s. And the United Kingdom's Lanka concept, once cancelled, is being revived under the Global Combat Air Program. Denmark's integration of similar ideas represents not just technological adoption, but strategic foresight, a way for smaller allies to remain relevant in a high-tech battle space dominated by superpowers. Operationally, the benefits are clear. A drone wingman can fly ahead of the formation to detect enemy radars or aircraft, feeding sensor data back to the F-35's fusion system, it can be sent into high-risk zones to draw enemy fire, allowing the stealth jet to remain hidden. In a strike mission, each drone could carry two to four precision weapons, providing the equivalent firepower of an extra fighter squadron at a fraction of the cost. Analysts estimate that a single drone may cost only 10 to 15 million USD, around one-tenth of a fully equipped F-35. For a country like Denmark, where pilot training pipelines are limited, this is a cost-effective force multiplier. Strategically, the integration of drones also fits the Nordic geography. Much of Denmark's new defense posture revolves around the Arctic, particularly Greenland, whose vast airspace and logistical challenges make persistent surveillance difficult. Drones can operate for extended hours in harsh environments, serving as forward sensors or electronic sentinels where manned aircraft would struggle. Their data can feed directly into NATO's Bodu Air Operations Center in Norway, part of the Alliance's new command structure for the High North. Yet this ambitious plan is not without challenges. The first is technological dependence. Collaborative combat aircraft remain primarily a U.S. development. 
While Denmark is a close ally, access to the drone's software architecture, mission planning tools, and AI control logic may remain restricted. Critics in the Danish parliament have already voiced concerns that Washington could hold a digital key over critical defense assets, echoing past debates about whether the F-35 contained hidden kill switches. The U.S. Department of Defense denies such allegations, but the concern underscores the political sensitivity of relying too heavily on American systems. Another issue is infrastructure. Operating manned-unmanned teams requires high bandwidth, encrypted communication links capable of surviving jamming and cyber interference. Denmark's northern bases, including Skrydstrup, must be upgraded with secure data relays and satellite uplink facilities. The Arctic's magnetic anomalies, GPS disruptions, and extreme weather pose additional hurdles. Without resilient navigation systems and AI-based autonomy, drones could lose contact or malfunction under polar conditions. Then there are doctrinal questions. Pilots must learn to command semi-autonomous assets while flying complex missions, a cognitive load far greater than traditional combat. The Danish Air Force will need to develop new training pipelines, command hierarchies, and legal frameworks defining accountability for AI-assisted decisions in wartime. These are not trivial adjustments. They represent a transformation in how air combat is conceived. In the broader Nordic context, Denmark's move could set a precedent. Norway, though focused on its own F-35 fleet, is experimenting with AI-enhanced maritime patrols. Sweden is leveraging Saab's experience with the stealthy Neuron drone and is likely to integrate autonomous systems into its next-generation fighter within the GCAP consortium. Finland, now a NATO member, is exploring unmanned reconnaissance drones for border surveillance. Together, these efforts suggest the emergence of a Nordic combat cloud, a region-wide digital ecosystem linking aircraft, drones, and ground sensors across allied airspaces. The strategic implications are profound. In the Cold War, the Nordic Front was a buffer zone. Today, it is the front line of Europe's technological defense. With Russia maintaining strong air and missile forces in Murmansk and the Kola Peninsula, control of the high north skies could determine freedom of navigation in the Arctic and North Atlantic. The introduction of AI-enabled drones gives small states like Denmark a chance to contribute meaningfully to NATO deterrence, not just through numbers, but through agility and innovation. If successful, Denmark's model could reshape how smaller nations think about air power. Instead of chasing expensive fleets, they could invest in a core of high-end fighters paired with affordable, expendable wingmen. A network of smart sensors, drones, and manned aircraft, all feeding into NATO's shared data cloud, would create a distributed force difficult to neutralize. It is the essence of 21st century deterrence, resilience through networks rather than sheer mass. Of course, the transition will take time. The first loyal wingman units may not be operational before 2030, and integration with F-35 systems will depend on American certification. Yet the political decision itself sends a message. Denmark is no longer content to be a junior partner flying second-hand jets. It is investing in technologies that will define the next generation of warfare. In the long term, the combination of F-35s and autonomous drones could evolve into a hybrid architecture linking naval, air, and space assets. A drone launched from an Arctic frigate could act as a relay for an F-35 strike package hundreds of kilometers away. Data from satellites, radar buoys, or even submarines could feed into the same operational picture. The boundaries between services and between human and machine will blur. 
Denmark's choice, then, is not merely about buying more aircraft. It represents a conceptual leap from owning platforms to managing networks, from pilot-centric warfare to system-centric strategy. For the Nordic region, it may mark the birth of a new model of deterrence, smaller nations wielding smart power, backed by collective data and autonomous allies in the sky. When future historians look back on this decade, they may see 2025 as the moment Denmark quietly redefined the balance of power in the high north, not through quantity, but through connectivity. The age of the loyal wingman has arrived, and Denmark intends to lead from the cold edge of Europe. 